Okay, so just a very brief one. I know I've got a lot of Commodore Amiga fans on my channel, and I thought a lot of you might be interested in Amiga Game Selector. So Amiga Game Selector is available for various different platforms, which I'm going to go through in a minute, and it's free. It's a really awesome system. So it's going to be available, or rather it's available for the Amiga Mini. It's available for Raspberry Pi 4 and 5. In fact, if I just open up the website at the moment, if we just scroll down, you're going to find just here. So we got the A500 Mini, and hopefully once the Maxi comes up by Retro Games Limited, it will be compatible with that too. Uh, it's available for Raspberry Pi 5, the 500 model, which is a fairly new Raspberry Pi, uh, the Pi 4, and the 400. It's also available for AGA Amigas, which is obviously the Amiga 1200, and the ECS models. Also compatible with Pi Storm 2. Uh, this also works with RetroArch, and I'm going to do a quick demonstration just using the normal UAE version in a minute. So you've got lots of different links. You can easily Google these yourself. I'm not going to provide the links. It's that easy to find really if you want it. So it's just a case of finding the platform you want to download it for. And it's just a case really of downloading the torrent. And once you download the torrent, you're going to get various different files. So for the video I'm going to show you or rather showcase, I've chosen the AGS UAE. So obviously if you want to use this for the Amiga Mini, the A500 Mini, or the Raspberry Pi 4, or 400, or Pi 5, or 500, then just download the relevant one there. Now for the Amiga Mini, you're going to need a 64 gigabyte USB stick for that, and it needs to be formatted in FAT32. But anyways, once you download your chosen distribution for your chosen platform, it's going to come with instructions, and it's very simple to install. It's literally just a case of formatting to FAT32 and dragging the contents onto your USB stick. It really is that simple. But anyways, let's actually show you what's in version 2.7. If I open this up, as you can see, I've already extracted this. It's just a case then of opening up AGS Launcher. And I'm going to be using an Xbox controller with this, and it works just fine. Okay, so as you can see, it's opened up with WinUAE. If I actually press F12, as this is open, it actually pops up with the WinUAE menu. So a lot of people out there would likely find WinUAE very confusing. But with this, it's actually pretty simple. So normally, if you open this up straight after opening the program itself for the first time, it's going to open up in a Windows mode. All we need to do then is just configure a few things, really. So again, just press F12 on your keyboard, and that's going to bring up this. And from here, to actually make this into a full screen on boot up, we're just going to go down to display. And from here, under settings, it's going to say native in RTG. As you can see, these are actually both on Windows. If I drop these down and go to full screen and also RTG full screen, then going to go to OK or rather just save that configuration first. Then it should boot up in full screen. We also got options here for scan lines if that's your thing. And I was saying just a minute ago about using an Xbox controller with this, which is really simple to set up. If you find your controller doesn't work, if you just go to game ports, you'll see just here under port 2, I've got my Bluetooth X input controller, which is my Xbox controller. And just remember, we're also going to need to use a mouse for certain games such as Simon the Sorcerer or Monkey Island or cannon fodder so always allow one of these ports to at least have a mouse and the other port to have a controller now obviously some amiga games would only work joystick in port 2 or port 1 so if this is the case just go to swap ports and as you can see that just swaps over so it's pretty simple so once you've got your settings if we just go to configurations what we can actually do here is just overwrite the default configuration just go to save and that's it, it's pretty easy. Okay, so let's take a look at Amiga Game Selector itself. So as we can see, we got lots of different categories just here. And on the right hand side, we got that very slick, awesome Commodore CD TV. We can change the themes there, but I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. So yes, I'm using my Xbox controller and it's working fine. So we've got different categories. Games, zero to Z are pretty much all the classic Amiga games from the AGA computers to the normal OCS and ECS model. So we pretty much got everything here. And if we just highlight one or two of these games, as we can see, we've also got imagery as well for these. So it's also got different regions of games. So for example, Leander, and we also got the USA version of Leander too, which is pretty cool. Now, if we come out of here, 
uh, we go to the games adult section, which is obviously going to be your Emmanuel games and that type of weird stuff, but not my cup of tea. If we go to the games AGA, this is going to be pretty much all your Amiga 1200 games. So again, just a case of going into each letter, and as we can see, we got lots of different games here, including that godforsaken Dennis game, which no one likes. It's pretty shocking. So just come out of there. We also got games, and this is the beta folder. So these are going to be obviously beta games. So if we just go back into there, we got Bagman 500, which is a relatively new game or new version of Bagman. If we come out and we can actually search games by genre, which is pretty good if you're into specific genres of Amiga games or games in general. So one of my favorite genres is platform action. If I just go down to that genre, as we can see, we've now got everything from Alfred Chicken, and I'm guessing Flimbo's Quest is likely going to be here in this section as well. And here is Flimbo's Quest. We also got classics like First Samurai and Flink CD32. So obviously CD32 or Amiga CD32 is in with this too. If we go to publisher, we've got all the big publishers of the day, if not all the publishers who had a little part in the Amiga scene at the time. So obviously all your big publishers are going to be here from Ocean Software, Team 17, as well as Psygnosis. And for those of you who remember Cytronic, which are still a thing today, we've also got Cytronic. If I go to Cytronic Software, We've actually got their version of Starquake, which they released around 10 years ago. We can go to Games by System, and like I was just saying, we've also got CD32 games here. If I just go into CD32, we got everything here from that awful Akira game. Uh, Alien Breed, which is much loved by Amiga fans, really cool stuff. We got the CDTV itself, obviously there wasn't particularly many decent games for the Commodore CDTV, but they're still there, and we also got Turrican 2 and Turrican, as well as Zenon 2, so that's pretty cool stuff. Got MT32, so there's a few games just there for that. If we go to Games by Theme, we got lots of different themes here, so if we go to the Bitmap Brothers, obviously this is going to be Chaos Engine stuff. We can define games by year, so if you're like me and you like looking for new releases for all platforms like the Amiga, if I go to 2024, we're going to find lots of new releases just there. And if I go to 2023, I was actually playing a really cool version of Turret Cutter on. It's not under this section, it's probably under 2022. Here it is, I seriously recommend playing this enhanced version of Turret Cutter 2, it's very awesome. Now we also got a top 200 category just here, so obviously this is going to be pretty much all your really good Amiga games which are highly rated, including the awesome Apidja, which I really love this game, I think this one's well loved. We also got classics like Beneath a Still Sky. So looking at themes then, as we know, I'm using that Commodore CD TV theme. So if I just go down to themes, I can go to AGS themes. And just remember to access each one of these, I'm pressing the A button on my Xbox controller. So here we go. So to apply one of these themes, it's just literally a case of pressing the A button. And there you go, it's now changed over. We also got Amiga OS themes, so we got things like Workbench 3.1 just here. Now compared with the previous release of AGS, this one has got a lot more. It's actually bigger in size as well. If we go to computers, we got different Amiga models. And as we know, just now I had the Amiga CD TV or Commodore CD TV. We also got most people's favorite Amiga, including my own, which is the Amiga 1200. Very sexy stuff. So we got lots of different themes there, including films. So some of my favorite 80s films are here, such as Alien. We also got the probably the best or my favorite version of Batman, the Michael Keaton Batman film theme just there. We also got Robocop, again, one of my favorites of the 80s, absolute legendary film. And The Goonies. Now, I've not actually heard of The Goonies, but it's there in case you know what this film is. <laughs> hey, so let's show you how to boot up a game then. So if I go to Games AGA, I'm going to open up the game for Samurai. So this is obviously the Amiga 1200 version. Now, before the game launches, it's going to tell you how to quit the game. So it's going to say press help to quit. If I press Y on my Xbox controller, it's going to bring up a virtual keyboard. I can then press help on that virtual keyboard and that's going to exit and take us back to Amiga Game Selector. And if I open up another game entirely, if I go to J and I open up something like James Pond 3. 
This time, it's going to say press F10 to quit. This is all WHD load, so there's no swapping the discs around, and this is as quick as you can get with launching Amiga games. So again, to open up that virtual keypad, like I said, I'm using the Xbox controller and pressing the Y button for this. And then we obviously navigate to the F10 button, press that, and that's going to quit. It's very simple. We are depending on you, Pond. So it really is that simple, like I say. Okay, if we go down to options and we go to boot options, I'm going to boot to workbench. And what I'm going to do next is just press F12 and I'm going to reset. And this should now boot into workbench. And there we go. So a very modern looking workbench. Now, if you love this type of style, do check out my AmiKit review, which I did a little while back as well as the AmiKit installation guide. I really can't recommend that enough. Now from workbench, if we go down to iGame, we go to games only or demos only. Just press yes on this. We can actually launch games from Workbench too. So as an example, if I just go down the Turrican 2 and launch this, as we can see, F10. WHD loads, and we got all these options too with WHD loads games. So I just press F10 on my keyboard, or like I say, just press Y on your Xbox controller if that's what you're using, and just press the relevant key there to exit those WHD loads games. So to go back into AGS again, if I just double left click on the AGS icon at the bottom, there we go. And to entirely close out of Amiga Game Selector, it's just a case really or how I do it, just press F12 on the keyboard. And then just go to quit. Now, like I say, I can't stress this enough. If there are settings you make within WinUAE, just remember to go to configurations and save it. It's really that simple. And that's it for my Amiga Game Selector 2.7 little showcase. So, yeah, it's a great system. And anyone that knows my channel well enough by now will know that I love Commodore computers, especially the C64 and Amiga. Now, if you want to run this on something like RetroArch or even the A500 Mini, I'm going to leave the links for both of those guides from the last release of AGS in my comments section. They're very easy to follow. So if you've got A500 Mini or you're a RetroArch user, it's very simple. And again, if you like the look of that modern looking workbench, then do check out my AmiKit. I'll also drop that in the comments section too. So anyway, that's it for today's guide. And like I say, I highly recommend AGS. They've also got a Facebook group page where you can download things from there. And it's a really active community. So do check that out. And also want to thank Paul Vince who brought this to us. He's a really awesome Amiga fan and a big shout out to him. Anyways, thanks for watching. Till next time, stay retro.